is the importance of material choice in new construction. My name is Bruce <coughs> Seed. I own a design build company named Design Horizons, and we manufacture and install a non combustible house product called the QCAP. So, non combustible materials are nothing new. Okay? This building, a Greek temple, Parthenon, destroyed by fire many times over, but parts of it still remain because they covered their masonry with plaster and it helped to protect the building. Romans, even better, they came up with modern day concrete. Definitely a non-combustible material. And then mid-1800s, um, because of the Industrial Revolution, they came up with great machinery that could make lots of things. And they made metal roofing panels. So they could mass produce these things. They were inexpensive. They didn't do it because they were non-combustible. They did it because they could manufacture it. By the World War II, we had figured out that asbestos was the best thing that we could come up with for making buildings fire resistant. We put it in everything. We put it in asphalt roofing. We put it in the mortar between bricks. We put it in sheetrock products and plaster. We put it in siding products like transite. 1977, they figured out that that was no good, and they started the wholesale removal of these products. Then, mid-1980s, along comes James Hardy without the asbestos, and he creates the cement reinforced fiber siding. So that is like the, the, the minimum standard these days for a non-combustible exterior. Okay, so all of those materials are all developed separately. They're all, some of them not even developed so that they were non-combustible, just a coincidence. And we employ a lot of these in the urban wildfire interface zones as requirements. So this event took over 2,400 structures. Everything on this hillside was taken except for what you see in the background there, which is the Quonset Duck Garage, an all-metal structure. So let's talk a little, a little bit about some of the science and the numbers, okay? Um, so wood is combustible at 700 degrees, right? We hit 700 degrees and the wood ignites immediately. Steel is combustible at 1400 degrees. So we reach 1400 degrees and steel is going to catch on fire. So when, the, when a fire event happens and ash and embers are distributed, that's one of the main things that takes out a structure. Right? They become covered in this ash and ember and those piles have a temperature of 750 to 900 degrees. So, ashes and embers pile up on top of a roof. That's a class A roof there. That's an asphalt shingle that won't readily catch on fire. But the temperature on top of that roof is 750 to 900 degrees. And what's underneath is plywood. 
So it's hard to keep that plywood and the structure underneath it, the wood trusses, from igniting. You know, and even though this house right here is going to need all the codes, this is a brand new house going up in paradise, it's going to meet all of the codes, it still has some vulnerabilities to it, and that's where the choice comes in. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to suggest that we mandate any of the things that we're going to talk about, but I think that choice has a, has a Okay, so wildfire urban interface zone required to have tempered glass in your exterior surface of your windows. Uh, tempered glass three times, it can take three times more heat than a regular piece of glass. It's four times as strong as a regular piece of glass. But what's not taken into account is this is a vinyl frame window. So vinyl is a very low temperature material. At 200 degrees, we can bend it and move it around and shape it. At 500 degrees, it loses all rigidity and has, it can't support itself. So in a, in a fire event, the temperature will melt a vinyl window out of its frame. The, the window will actually fall away, fire can go straight in through the opening. So overhangs another big place where fire ultimately gets a hold of the building. We don't get to do this anymore, right? This is this is old school. Those are exposed rafter tails. Very combustible construction right there. When this neighbor's 70-year-old fence catches on fire, those windows and that overhang have no chance. Buddy into the house there, that's also something that we know is not good anymore. So let's talk a little bit about solutions then. Okay, we know all these vulnerabilities and we know the codes, but we have some choices that we can make. Something like this house, which is one of the cute cabins. Um, it reimagines a lot of different things. So notice that the overhang slopes up, right? That is because we all know that in a fire regular or a fire, you can warm your hands by a fire, but you cannot stick your hand above the candle, right, without getting burnt. So the same thing is true for overhangs. Overhangs are a direct projection off of the building. If you have fire, if you were unsafe and you had things up against your house, shrubberies that could burn, that overhang is really, really vulnerable. So this particular one, metal siding, masonry siding, hardy board siding, Same thing, overhangs that cannot catch on fire, that will not burn. Siding that will not catch on fire. Windows that can take the heat. Structure that is also non-combustible. So we're talking about exterior surface right now, but a big part of this is also structure. So in my system, this takes the place of a wooden truss. 
So if this was on the out, it also is the metal roofing as well. So on the outside of the building, if that trough fills with ash and ember at 750 to 900 degrees, that's, that steel can withstand 1400 degrees. It's not going to catch on fire. Right, California, great places for mountain views. Everybody wants to live amongst the trees. If you make smart choices, <coughs> you can do it safely and protect your investment. So this is actually the house that's going back on that foundation. So we talk about 100% non-combustible structure that we provide with these Q cabinet kits. So I'm talking about the mid floors, all in steel. You can make the argument that a home like this doesn't need a fire sprinkler system. It's redundant. There is nothing on the interior to burn. <coughs> brought this along. This is a piece of the sheathing that we use for the exterior that you would put your siding over the top of. So on this side would be your metal stud, a non-combustible structure, and then on this side would be your non-combustible siding. This is a non-combustible sheathing. It's concrete board, insulation, and concrete board. If this surface is facing towards the inside of the house beyond the sheetrock, then any house fire that would happen would also not catch your neighbor's house on fire because it can't get out. <clears throat> Metal windows with tempered glass. Not vinyl windows, not <laughs> fiberglass windows. Not wood windows, metal windows with tempered So, structure from the top to the bottom, non-combustible. Taking all that we know about non-combustible materials and using them to create a cohesive product that has the least chance of catching on fire of anything because all the products that are, it's composed of are non-combustible. with trees. You can't cut them all down. We need to do something a little bit more to keep our houses safe. Okay, that's it. Let's take one or two questions. So you build uh, new construction uh, like this. Are you doing any uh, retrofitting of stuff as well too? And can you speak no. to that at all? No. What's the cost uh, for construction like this? We're basically the same price as conventional framing. Could someone add on to that question? Because I of course. of course. You have the uh, overhangs with the sloping back towards the structure itself. Um, I live in a snow area and what, uh, they look pretty stout, but what's the snow load? We have the distinction of building in one of California's highest snow load areas. It's the Outer Pass, 365 pounds. That's about as big as it gets. How many completed houses 
close to half a dozen. Do you have any experience or um, using cob or earth and plaster or light straw clay type style building in terms of fire resistance or? Um, I don't. I don't. Comments or thoughts about it? <laughs> <laughs> um, Talk at lunch, you know. 